for reminding. Is it on? Showing? Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Okay, I will be laying the sheik on your regime. Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Rabbish, Rahli, Sadri, Wayasili, Amri, Wahla, Lukta, Milisani, Yafkahu, Kauli, Rabbizidna, Ilma, Rabbizidna, Ilma. So, inshallah, today we will start uh, the past tense uh, exercise and past tense review. Um, although this is in the now textbook exercise and we're doing now right now and we are looking at how uh, inshallah uh, later on we will look how fail plays a part in sentences but in actuality this is basically the uh, foundation of surf so these two exercises, the past tense exercises and the present tense exercises, the more better you understand them, the more you will be able to easily do surf uh, later on as we review and the advanced surf that we haven't done yet. So for those to be easier for us to comprehend, it's very, very important that these, ex these conjugations are like we can say them in our sleeps. So inshallah, uh, we'll just go through this. And one way that I remember the conjugation is that you see Nasara. Now these are the, this is family one, as we know, because the Hua version only has three letters. So Nasara, so this is family one and you see, the Nasara, the letters Noon Sadra, they remain the same in all of the words that are in the conjugation, right? There might be Haraka changes, but the letters will always be the same. And you just add on the different signs, the different endings that will show you uh, the inside doors. Now, one very important thing is that Nasara, although we say it's a past tense fail, but we know that every fail has an inside dua. So this is actually, Nasara is also a sentence. It has a doer and it has an action. So both are there inside. So Nasara means he helped. So he helped is a whole sentence with he being the subject and help being the predicate. So uh, that's why a lot of big issues and big concepts in the Quran are mentioned in a few words because they have so much in them, so much uh, depth in the meanings that they are easily said uh, in a few words. So inshallah, the endings are what we really, really, really need to understand and what we really need to comprehend. So Nasara, when there is nothing else except the three letters, that's the Hua version, and you've got the Hua inside. Nasara with the Alif, you read it with an elongated Alif at the end. Uh, Nasara, then Nasaru for whom, you know, wow. And this wow is also known as wow al Jama'a. This is a sign of plurality in verbs. So it's just a small point that whenever you see wow uh, at the end of a fail, you will know that it is a plural verb. And we have this wow in isms as well, right? Remember Muslimuna over there, wow is also a um, sign of plurality. So Nasara, Nasara, Nasaru. So what I do is that I have the Nasara fixed in my mind and I just keep changing the ending. So Nasara with nothing is Hua. Nasara with an Alif. Again, Alif is also a sign of dual like was in the instance we did Muslimani, right? So here Nasara, Alif is also of duality. Then you've got Nasaru, wow, plural. So in this sense, if you know the markers, if you know the endings well, then no matter what is in the beginning, we'll inshallah do the eight family soon. So we'll see.
no matter what is in the beginning the ending will always be the same in past tense fails so with past tense fail we do not um, especially nahu we do not give much importance to what is before what is in the beginning but for us right now the most important thing is the end so then we have nasarat you know ta of tanis ta of feminine so this is nasarat nasarata again ta is for feminine femininity and alif is for duality so you've got nasarat then nasarata then a small but a very powerful change yeah. starts any questions till now sorry i am just uh, going on and on uh, no alhamdulillah if any we ask okay okay sure then one thing starts to change and this is that up till this point up till the these five words the first three in the first line the third person masculine line and the first two fails in the feminine third person line they have fatha uh, on the ra on the last letter so you see nasara nasara nasaru sorry with the uh, dhamma in the jama on the ra then you got again nasarat ra has fatha then nasarana ra has again fatha so up till now the last letter of the three uh, letter word nasara have harakat on them but from hunna version the last letter of the word nasara starts having sukun so it's not nasarana it's nasarna and this will go till the end and this is a very important change which inshallah when we do the exercises you will know that if for example there is a jazm before the sign the ending of past tense then it will be either from hunna to nahnu these are the versions that have the what that have the jazm so inshallah when we do that we'll uh, come to this point again so then we know that nasarna the noon is called noon niswa it's called the noon of feminine noon and it is a very very important and very very uh, powerful noon it does not get uh, dropped um, in past tenses we don't drop it in present tenses even where we will do the light and lightness this noon does not drop then we come to the second person you words and they start with nasaruta this is relatively easy because ta represents anta nasar <laughs> then <clears throat> then got nasartum represents antum nasarti represents anti nasartuma represents antuma and nasartunna represents antunna now sometimes what happens is that people uh, mix these endings with attached pronouns so how to differentiate between them that is also depends on the jazm you see on the ra here if uh, inshallah when we go to the exercises we'll see i don't want to confuse you right now so and then we've got the first person nasartu is ana and nasarna is nahnu so this was these are the endings that we need to really 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 memorize and whenever we see these endings because none of these endings will be in the present tense and usually these endings will indicate that the word that we're seeing the is a fail and a past tense fail at that 
Any questions um, till now? Um, Astria, uh, yes. hello. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yeah, uh, I have uh, one thing sometimes uh, uh, differentiating that if it's an ism or a fail, like mm -hmm. una endings like uh, in ism, like mus uh, Muslim una, the plural one, how, mm -hmm. how to differentiate that it's not a light version like Muslim moon. And, uh, and this Nasaru, how to distinguish between that? Yes, uh, inshallah, we'll, when we do the recognition exercises, we'll do the ism recognition as well. And uh, like, for example, if you're saying, we're going ahead right now, but just for this one, like you're saying, if it's Muslim Mu, and here we have Nasaru, so how to differentiate whether uh, it is... Um, an ism or not, the first thing is that the word Muslimu is starting with a mu. Mm -hmm. And we know that that's one of the signs, usually, it's one of the signs of isme file. Isme mm -hmm. file and isme maful start with mu. Then, okay. yeah, in this instance, you've got an indicator that it's an ism. But in other words, that we don't know whether they are isms or fails. What was done was there was a process of elimination. I have a chart of process of elimination. Inshallah, I'll share with you what Stad did with us in the sessions. And if you see an ism that is a, a word that you think is a light ism, then you have to see whether the four reasons of for an ism being light are there or not. Okay. If there are, then of course it will be considered an ism in the light version. But if there are they are not, then it is most likely to be a fail. Okay, thank you. Let's move on. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. So now we'll just do a few of these. So inshallah, we'll just touch base. We won't uh, do the whole of things, uh, but we'll just go through a few of them. So <clears throat> uh, one by one, uh, if you could, it would be uh, great. Okay, uh, inshallah, number nine. Akurartum. Who will do first? Can I try this? I will try. Yes, please. Uh, here, the attached pronoun is antum. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, akhrar, akhrar tum. Akhrar akhrar is tum. Akhrar tum. No, no, it, it is agree. Stop on the ak. Okay. And then rar. Akhrar. Tum, right? Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, and you all agreed. Good. And uh, one more thing is uh, as we saw in this, we saw that this was uh, a tum version has jazam, has sukoon, on the letter before the tum, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we can say the hua version of like nasar tum was nasara. So the hua version of akrar tum is akra ra. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Can we Just, also identify the inside doer here? Um, like that helps also um, past tense uh, like akrar is uh, Anna, can we identify uh, both, like the attached version and the uh, uh, attached pronoun and the first, inside tool? First of all, first of all, this is dot present tense. So it is, a, it will be akorara. The he, uh, what was the meaning? Sorry, it came, it left my Ha, he admitted. 
or he recognized so he accepted so aqrartum okay. so the huwa version is aqrara this is aslama family right aqrara and do the conjugation uh, the whole conjugation from the beginning aqrara aqrara qaru yes aqrarat aqrata aqarna aqrara yes aqra aqarna aqrarna aqrarna anasan okay aqrarna aqrarta aqrartuma aqrartum aqrarti aqrartuma aqrartunna aqartu aqarna ha just remember i'm going to, can you see me writing no you can't see me writing okay yeah uh, uh, please write the past you said this is present tense write the past tense yeah just a second let me share whiteboard can you see the yeah whiteboard yeah yeah okay okay ak ak rar tum so this was the word that we had right now mm. this is the anto version as we said mm. so the hua version is we know that this jazm comes because of the attached pronoun mm -hmm. and that past tense fails especially the hua version will always have fata at the end Just like or in all the families nasara fataha uh, uh, daraba then we had samia we had hasiba we had karuma then all the big eight families we had allama jahada aslama tafarraqa ta'awana iq inqalaba iqtaraba istaghfara so the past tense hua version will always end in fatha hua version i am not talking about the rest just the hua version but uh, this is uh, uh, you said that this was present tense because uh, uh, like uh, uh, i for the present tense but uh, what would be the beginning of the hua can you no, write the we, whole thing in the past doing, tense was you we are doing past tense this isn't a present tense i thought you said uh, ak uh, ak rara was uh, uh, akrara was pa uh, present tense maybe I, i misunderstood you okay or uh, maybe i have i mean a mistake and said present no we are doing past tense oh, okay. why okay. is this past tense it can't be a present tense because the ending isn't u okay you okay you know we have okay. yansuru okay. ansuru no no i'm talking uh, i was looking at the top like uh, this was confused me the beginning uh, i thought this was the present tense marker and i thought that i heard you say okay. that it was no uh, present tense and I, uh, so uh, so this is uh, uh, this um, alif in the beginning is uh, part uh, is because of aslama family it is uh, yes okay yes. okay okay this is aslama family that's why it's beginning with a hamza okay but when when we have words when we have past tense or any word that uh, fail especially that starts with hamza then there is a way to a certain what it is first because we see that the most usage is for the present tense so then we match the word first to the present tense chart if it is a beginning u ending then it will be a present tense and we do not need to go further but if it does not match then we go to past tense so, uh, so uh, i hear like if we uh, i'm confused to figure out that akrartum is past tense or present tense because now we know that we are doing 
uh, past tense exercise. So in the present tense, it will be akraru uh, tum. Uh, how how would I? Yes, ako. For example, it will be akrara. This is the uh, past tense, right? Yeah. But if you, we are attaching a akrara yak reru. But if we are attaching a pronoun, how would be the uh, um, uh, how would we differentiate between uh, past and present? Of uh, 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 tum is past tense, but uh, if uh, I know I'm moving ahead, but uh, to distinguish between the two, that uh, because I'm confused here with the uh, alif in the beginning. Also, can you write the present tense version so, so that I can compare? Yes. First of all, this is a weird word, so it akorora usually becomes something else. But anyways, here just take this word here, akorar okay. tum. Okay. For now, okay. and you've got the tum ending. Mm -hmm. So because of the tum ending, it cannot be a present tense at all. Okay. 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 Attach. Okay. In present tense, it's uh, would be uh, the attached version would be different uh, differently. Okay. There is no attached version in either. It's just the endings, right? And okay. Tum is not an attached pronoun. It is part of the word. Okay. Oh, right? it's not. Okay, it's not attached pronoun. Okay. No. No. Look. You have okay, okay. I, got, I got you. It, it is part of the uh, past tense chart. Okay. Yes. I thought it was okay. Right. Like uh, you have Nasar too, right? Uh, I got it. I got it. I somehow okay. thought that it was attached version. Okay. No, no, no. It wasn't attached. So everybody uh, understood till we did. Oh. So what we were doing was that we were trying to go back to the whole conjugation. So with akarar tum, what we did was that we know that this is the antum version. So we wanted to go back to the hua version. So then what we will do, we will just erase the tum, the ending. And this jazm will erase and we'll put a Fatha, and we will have the Hua version. Is that clear to everybody? Yeah. Okay, we'll do this with the uh, next one too, so that we can. Uh, and these exercises, if you want to do these exercises, inshallah. Uh, I want you to do the whole conjugations for each word, if possible. At least do uh, five to six from each page so that you can practice the whole conjugations. Okay, now let's see. Uh, number 21. Who will go next? Hello, can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, who will do number 21? I will. Uh, yeah, if, you have to tell you go ahead. Uh, uh, is someone doing it? No, sister, you can go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, so this is Hunna. And um, let me try the conjugation. It is Faba uh, Faba uh, Laga Faba. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Fa is not a part. Oh, of... yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. I remember. Thank you. No it problem. is Hunna uh, version. And uh, the Hova is Balaga, uh, Balaga, Balagu. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'll do the male first. Uh, so uh, balaga um, uh, balagata anta version balagata balagata no 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 uh, no, no not balagata uh, no, Bala one, one, one minute balagta um, balagta uh, 
balag tuma balag tum and then uh, uh, here version uh, it is balagat balagat bala balagta balagata balag okay balagata and balag balagna this one and then anti version balag balagti balag tuma balag tunna and ana ana is balag balag tu nanu balagna excellent good uh, it's just that uh, if we follow uh, this way uh, like here it will be easier to keep track of the last letter haraka right oh, okay okay because if you do it like first you do all the masculine versions then the feminine versions it's up to you it's completely okay. correct there's nothing wrong with it but okay. for remembering for keeping it in your mind it is easier mm. to do it this way okay. so okay. as i okay. said uh, there are multiple ways of doing each okay yeah okay 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 Thank then you. we'll move on to the next uh, uh, okay let's see Number fourteen. And here we can try for this thing. Uh, Sorry. Ajala hunna. We can try for that. Ajala hunna. Ajala. Oh, sorry. Hunna. Change. Babalagna. Ajala hunna. Yes. What is ajala hunna? Number twenty-one. Yes. Yeah. We can try for that also. It is also the attached pronoun, right? it is an attached pronoun but tell me um is it uh, an ism or a fail first it is it is a fail it is a fail uh, we can't recognize it Uh, which word are we doing, Sister Sue? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Kabalagna. So yes. Balaga is a fail, isn't it? No, 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 not balagna. After it, ajala hunna. Ajala, ajala, ajala hunna. Okay. Ajala is. Is it like? Um. It is. It is not an ism, right? Because it has an attached pronoun to it. Attached pronouns can be attached yes. to Semantics. an ism as well as a fail. Remember. So then it is ism. I think then because um, it is talking about time, right? Ajala. Yeah, but that is from a translational point of view. I want to know uh, from a grammatical like point of view, why do we consider it an ism or why do we consider it a fail? Uh, I think because attached pronoun in fail would be ajal ajal na. It will not be hunna at the end, so it should be ism. That's okay. Let's uh, do this on the whiteboard. So we are saying, oh, this is yes. Ajala hunna. Okay. Now, what? Whether this ajala is an ism or a fail, right? we know that attached pronouns can be attached to isms or fails so how to see whether uh, this is an ism or a fail um like you mentioned earlier in the session that once it reaches the hunna the last letter gets a sukun like uh, after nasarta nasartuma nasartunna 
So yes, but uh, yeah, but over there again, I am saying this. In the past tense conjugation, the past endings past. are a part of the word. They are not attached pronouns. Oh, that's no okay. Like for example, Nasara is yeah. he helped, right? If I want to say he helped you. So I'll do Nasara because he helped. The first is the he helped part. Oh, then, so, so what you're saying is it is maybe uh, whom he helped. Like uh, that is um, the maf'ul. Yeah. So this becomes, this is the fail with the doer inside. And this becomes detail. So, Nasara Hunna Oh, he helped those women. Yes. Okay. Now, here you have Nasara Hunna. And here you, you have Ajala Hunna. So, how to determine whether Ajala is an ism or not? Uh, we know that uh, the top uh, line, like uh, first four in the chart, uh, are uh, deva haraka. So this is hova form of the past tense. The sakun comes later. So this that's one hint that ajala is a fail uh, with uh, hova form. Okay. Like nas it matches with nasara. Okay, but we have a sentence here. We said that when seeing whether a word is an ism or a fail, we first see the sentence. So the sentence we had was like, uh, if we just look at Ajala Hunna and Nasara Hunna, then we have no doubt it's a fail, right? Yeah. But then we see if it's in contest Faba Laguna. Ajala Hunna. Right? So when we want to see if a word is an ism or a fail, first we will eliminate the possibility of it being an ism. Is that clear? Yes. Okay, I think I'm losing most of you uh, no, no, no. because uh, I can only hear two or three of you. So just, you don't have to answer, but at least uh, if I can hear everybody saying yes, they understood, then I can go ahead because otherwise, if you do not understand the first step, I go ahead, it will all jumble up more. So, inshallah, please just respond with if you understood or not till this point. So, uh, can you give an example of an ism uh, uh, attached with um, uh, an attached pronoun with an ism so that we can uh, uh, know how to distinguish? Just give an example. Yeah. I am giving an example, actually. I just didn't want to tell you that this was not a fail. It was an ism. So Mr. you told to first eliminate what? Ism. And but ism would have four properties, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So here, here what is happening is we look at Ajala Hunna and we do not know whether it is fail or her or uh, ism because here you've got Nasara and Ajala. They are almost identical in their uh, harakat and in the hunna with them. So there's no way for us to know separately, just one word that whether it's an ism or not. But in mm. Quran, because our goal is the Quran, in Quran context and all that is happening around that word will indicate whether it is an ism or not. So here mm. you've got fa 
So we know Balaghana is the Hunna version. Hmm. Of past tense fail. Right? Hmm. Yeah. And right after it, we have this Ajala Hunna. So for Balagana, they reached, uh, they all, those women, those ladies reached Ajala Hunna. Now we put Ajala. And Ajala, if we because first we have to see whether the word is an ism or not. Only when it's not an ism, then we go on to fail. That is the progression that Rustad told us. So here mm -hmm. Ajala, we mm -hmm. see that Ajala here is light, right? It's not a heavy. Mm -hmm. If it's an ism, just think of it as an ism for right now so that we can eliminate that possibility. So mm -hmm. it's light then it has no al in on it right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it is also in the nasab status mm -hmm. and it is coming after the fail usually mm -hmm. what happens is that any word which is an ism if it comes after a fail, it will either be in the rafa status as a doer, as an outside mm -hmm. doer, or in the nasab status as a detail, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is, this point, is this point clear? Yeah, I think I understand. So in one sentence, there can be actually only one ism, right? Uh, one fail. So we already have a fail, right? Yes, yes. So, uh, is this statement right that in one sentence there can only be one fail? Is, is that statement right? Yes, up to a point because actually the problem is that we haven't started uh, sentences, but in the uh, simple sentences, uh, yes, there will be one fail, right? Okay, in, okay. Uh, in one part of that. Uh, so, so there are uh, complex sentences. There are embedded sentences. Their sentence structures are very, very complicated. Inshallah, we'll do it in the advanced structure point. But the basic sentences that soon, Inshallah, we'll be doing with Ustad. Yes, you will have one fail uh, so, in any part. So from that, we can conclude. Uh, tell me that if that is the right way of thinking. That and then we can conclude that if we have a fail. In, uh, we, we have a fail and then we got uh, a, do, a doer in, in, uh, in it, then the detail is going to come. So there, uh, uh, most probably. So yes, whatever this fail is doing, in we need, uh, a detail is going to come. Um, even if there is another fail, it is going to come later. First, they are going to talk about that, uh, 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 what is happening with the detail, right? Yes, yes. In the simple sentence, because I do not want to say something that gets changed later on, but okay. in a simple sentence as this, usually 90% of the time, what will happen is that after a fail, either you will find a harf mm. or you will find an essay. Mm -hmm. If the ism, if the word right. has a dhamma at the end, then it will be a dua. And if that word has a fatha in the end, or is in the fatha, or is in the nasab status, then mm -hmm. it will be a detail. detail. So here, fabalaguna ajala hunna. Ajala is a mudaf. Mm -hmm. It is an ism which is light, no al, and as it has is in the nasab status, mm -hmm. then it is the detail for fabalagna, and so mm -hmm. it is an ism here. Okay, when it is mudaf, when it is mudaf, will I? Hunna. Hunna. It is not in jar status, right? Jar status, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Inshallah, we'll do more of these 
so then mm -hmm. we'll we'll uh, have more practice inshallah inshallah okay let me share the document again okay now let's go to number 14 ikh tasamu Okay. You decide who wants to do this. I'll be back in just a minute. Please. Okay. Okay. Uh, is anyone doing it, or I can do it? Go ahead, sister. So, Ikhtasamus uh, sounds like uh, the Ikhtaroba family. I think it's eight, right? Family, yeah. and it is uh, home because it is ending with the wow, Alif. Ikhtasamus, mm. so it is Madi, home. Yeah. I, I think the Ustad just uh, in today's session uh, told us mm -hmm. that uh, it is not uh, how to differentiate between a command and um, uh, the home version of inside um, uh, plural that uh, vow, uh, after vow a lift comes, then it's a command. And in uh, the light version, uh, no, not the like the regular home version of inside tour doesn't has a alif after vowel, so it is a command. But so you say, in, no, this is not command. Don't think this is command. Be, because uh, what I remember is that the ustad today uh, told us uh, uh, that uh, there was a word. That's what he told. Oh. Uh, that's what I remember. Let's sister Asfia said, uh, uh, tell us. Okay. But in table it has given like hum for no no swad draw vowel. Hmm. Yeah. It, uh, no, no, that is not the sign for command. I think um, you must have gotten some mixed up something. Yeah. Let uh, sister Asfia. Okay. Asfia. What, what what was being discussed? Um. Uh, uh, sister Asfia, I was. I was uh, doing it. I said maybe it's family eight, Ikhtaraba family, and uh, it uh, looks like Madi home version. Ikhtasamu. Yes. Uh, Sister yeah. Pose is saying maybe it is Taman. So what do you what do you say? Whether it might be command you're saying. But here is Ta is already there. So this is from Ikhtaraba family. Command yeah, doesn't the have Ta. The the family family is fine. Uh, I was uh, Sister Asfia. What I remembered, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, from um, uh, 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 Ustad Noman telling us today that how to distinguish between uh, the home uh, of the past tense uh, version, mm -hmm. like Nasaru, mm -hmm. and the command, like mm -hmm. uh, uh, Ansuru, that mm -hmm. uh, Alif comes after Vow in a command. And uh, uh, Nasaru the, uh, wouldn't have, uh, Nasaru home version wouldn't have Alif at the end. Do I remember right or I'm mistaken? Um, I don't remember him saying uh, that. Um, but uh, is this a part... like Nasaru? Oh, okay, maybe I mix Nasaru here. Does but have that Alif. could be Hamzatul Wasla. This okay. is so, so yeah, it is this, clear that uh, I, I I mixed up whatever he said. Uh, yes, uh, this yes, yes. I, is, uh, I get yeah. I get what you're saying, and it is uh, this um, this alif at the end with the vow. Number one, it is a writing rule, right? Number two, this alif yes. is called alif al fariqa. Let me write it on the white screen so that 
Which Alif? Nasaru. Uh, <laughs> okay, after the plural. Yes, after the yeah. plural, you've got this Alif at the end. This Alif is called Alif Al-Fariqa. Written like this. Alif Al-Fariqa or Alif al -Viqaya. No, no, no. Yeah, you can say Viqaya too. Uh, but I've uh, the word that I've usually seen in the grammatical analysis books is Alif Fariqa. But yes, Alif al Viqaya would work too. I, I heard Alif al Viqaya. This is this word is new for me. Okay. No problem at all. Both Anyways, can be because yes. Farqa is that it separates. Farq. Uh -huh. yes. Farq. Yes. Right? So it separates hmm. the uh, this uh, fail. Farq from uh, getting mixed into the next word. Exactly. So it can quite literally be Viqaya too. So no problem at all. Whatever word works for you. Alif al Fariqa or Alif Viqaya both can be uh, both are correct. So this alif is always written after the wow, and this is there to keep the word, the fail separate from an ism or a harf or whatever comes after it. Now, yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, hmm. yeah I and uh, I I remember uh, now that uh, he was talking about ibatu. And he said that that was a command. So uh, yes, why that, was uh, it a he, why was it a command? But, is uh, just a second. Let me. And uh, uh, he, uh, he, th uh, then he talked about the past tense uh, version of that. So uh, yes, yes. Like for example, we have the word ich tasamu. Uh -huh. I apologize for my writing. Ich tasamu. Okay, the word that we have here, let's make this again. Okay. Now, uh, um, Rafika, you were right. This is the ik taraba family because you have the ik uh, and then ta after it. So, the hua version would be. Ikhtasama. Ikhtasama. Exactly. Ikhtasama. Now, for us, the commanding verb is made from the present tense. So we will then go to yakh tasimu, right? Yes. Ikh taraba yakh taribu. Mm. Now, then okay. we will have takh tasimu because we need the second person present tense. Then we will lighten, make it lightest takh tasim. And ikh tasim, lastly. Yes, because okay. Okay. so you see there is a kasra. So when we have ikh tasamu and let me just erase this so that we can see the difference. So we have ikh tasim. This is the antum version, right? Now, ikh tasimu would be the, sorry, that is anta version. I apologize. Anta version. Okay. And ikh tasimu would be the amar antum version. This is the home version, past tense. 
The only difference between these two words is the haraka of the middle letter. So if you want to know whether you have ikhtasimu in the beginning, then you'll first find the family. That is essential because then only you'll know what happens in the past and the present and how to make the amar, make the commanding from the present tense. Because if you mistake the haraka in the present tense, if we had done iqtaraba, yaqtarabu, not yaqtaribu, then both would have been the same. So being able to go back and forth in the families is very important. And that's why we'll do, we'll do the present, the past tense uh, for every family. Then we'll go to the present tense, do that for every family. So that when we go, get random words, we can ascertain the family and then we can go through it and we can see where that word will fit, inshallah. So is this clear? Yes, Alhamdulillah. Can you ask me something from that page? I haven't attempted okay. yet. Sure. Let me go back to the document. Okay. Then we have there are certain uh, words here that are weird words okay number seven ushribu oh why did you ask me this why okay no problem <laughs> now just tell me what uh, version is this of the past tense Past tense, past, past tense, uh, the plural version. Mm -hmm. Plural, which one? Second person, third person, first person, which one? Third, third person plural. Good. This is home version. And yes. the family? Family. Uh, family four. Okay. But that would have been Ash Rabu. This is Ush Rabu. Oh, sorry. Yes. I don't know. I'm blank. No problem at all. Yeah, first of all, congratulations. You got to the family correctly. This is Ashraba family, but this is the passive. But it form. is passive. Yes. Oh, that's what I was thinking. That are we doing passive or not? I was thinking we are not doing passive. No, no. Yeah, but here it's passive, so but I in cannot my mind, say I that. I was like passive. conjugating, conjugating, and I was thinking, no, this is passive only. Yes, it is passive. It is passive past. Okay, so uh, is it possible to do the passive past uh, conjugation for this word? Yes, uh, ashraba yushribu. So ushraba. Ushriba. Yes, Ushriba. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yushrabu. No, no, no. Uh, just the past tense oh. passive. The oh, whole, yes, yes. like. Uh. Uh, so it was Ush. Ushribu. Ushribu. Yes. Ushribu. Ushriba. Ushribu. Yes. Here is it. Ush. No, no, no. Ushriba. It will be Ushriba. Ushriba. Huh? Ushriba. Ushribu. Yes. Ushribat. Ushribata. Ushribna. Ushripta. Ushripta. Ushriptu. Ushripti. Ushriptuma. Ushriptuna. Ushriptu. Ushribna. Excellent. So you see, Ashraba was the active and 
ush riba i told you that whether it's uh, a past tense who a version will always be, have a fatha at the end right so ashraba is the active and ush riba is the passive and the conjugation is identical except for the harakat in the beginning that show it to be a passive hmm okay alhamdulillah okay so you can do this is a personal practice i hope that you all do is that for the words that we did in this do the conjugation for the active as well as passive past tense right like for example uh, we did ikhtasama right here we did ikhtasamu so the active is ikhtasama but the passive is ukh tusima okay ukh to so do the conjugation with ukh tusima yes okay what about this kuntu Where? which one oh uh, here yes yes this kuntu uh kuntum is a very weird word uh, it kana, is a very it is weird kana, right yes very weird word because it has uh, although it's written as kana the root letters are kaf waw na, noon and this is irregular advanced uh, surf so i'm not going to mm -hmm. go there because there are many 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 rules that come into play and the words change from uh the usual way we do uh words so kuntum is actually um let me try version. okay sure yes you already said sure kana kana kanu kanat kanata kunna kunta kuntuma kuntum yes go on kun kunta kuntuma kuntum kunti kuntuma kuntunna kuntu kunna excellent excellent great yes the only difference is that here you drop the alif or the waw in between and it uh, is reduced to only two letters why that happens inshallah we'll do in um the advanced surf inshallah so if you want to do it you can do it if you do not want to do it it's okay you can leave it for the time being okay, okay now kana, number kana, kana. mm -hmm. this kana kun did not come kanu then uh, kana then kanu Aspia. yeah it is better to show you know once okay. they once everybody see it one time next time they will remember it more properly that's how okay. i learned sure sure no problem at all because this, this is, word is very common yes it is and uh, it uh, it is very common and it is very very important in nahu as well so inshallah okay. kana kanu kanat kanata and then kunna <laughs> kunta kuntuma kuntum from here like it is easy just like every other conjugation ta tuma yes. tum ti tuma tunna mm -hmm. tuna yes only the thing is with the kunna mm -hmm. yes kun tuma kun tunna kun tu kunna
Okay, everybody done? Can I move on then? Yeah. Sister here, that kun tun, it, uh, it will come in kunna. All of them, ladies. Kunna will be uh, all of them, ladies. Uh, mm -hmm. Are, were, sorry. And kun tunna, okay. you all, ladies. Uh -huh. My question is, yes, in number yeah. 22, it has been given like a kun tum. Okay, just sorry, because I, I have to change constantly my screen. So I wasn't seeing the page yet. Just a second. Okay, uh, here we go. Yes, which one? Kun, kun tom is there. That kun yes, will kun. conjugate with kunna? No, no, no. It's not conjugated yes. kunna. It is, uh, it is still kana, but with the, uh, in the antum version. Mm -hmm. So it is and the antum version, right? Okay, okay. Yeah. Here oh, only the it. tum is there. The kun is part of the kana, and mm -hmm. tum is the ending of the antum version. Does that come out there? Why, yeah. Okay. Uh, then, hmm. Okay, we'll do this one and then we'll move on, inshallah. Uh, number eight, the last one. Ambatat. Uh, Aslama family with a feminine mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And Ambata. which one? Uh, past tense. No, no, which oh, version of past tense? What's, What's the inside door? Uh, inside door is uh, she, he. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, now you can do it. Anbata, anbata, anbatu, anbatat, anbat, na. No, no, you missed the uh, anbat. Uh, ambatat, then what will be the dual uh, form? Anbata. No, no anbata. Anbatata. Yes. <laughs> Since it is like a tongue twister. Yes, it is a tongue twister. An and yes. Yeah, just, just one thing. Uh, uh, anbata is the f uh, like uh, the part of the word and then ambata ta. Right? We can't just say ambata. Yes, yes. Because then it will be huma version for the male, for the masculine. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Ambata ta. Ambata ta. Ambat na. Yes, excellent. An Anbat ta, anbat tuma, anbat tum, anbat yes. ti, anbat tuma, anbat tunna, anbat tu, uh, anbat, an, can you write it? Yeah. An, yes, I am writing it. Anbat, anbat yeah. na. Will the two version have a dhamma on it since yes. uh, Tasukun and Yes. Mutarik. Yes. Is the screen showing what I'm writing? Although I'm writing very yes. horribly. Okay. <laughs> Ambatu. Then you've got Ambatat. Then you've got ambatata to make it different from. Then you've got ambat. Now, as we saw that from the Hunna version, what happens is uh, ambatna, right? Ambatna. So here we have. For example, from Nasarata, 
what happens is then we do nasarna right so what we do we do we put jazm on the last letter and then we do the na over here we had am batata right Ambata, ta. Then what we do is, um, but we put the jazm at the end and then we say ta. But this is not the way we write Arabic. Whenever we have two similar letters, with the first one being sakin and the Last one being mutaharik with a haraka, right? What happens is it takes on um, but they merge, right? This is this. Sorry. So what happens is if you've got two similar letters, like here we have two tas. And the first one has jazm, and the second one has a haraka. Then, according to the writing rules of Arabic, these two merge. We put the shadda to show that the they were there are two ta's here, and we put the haraka of the last one over it to show that the second ta has a fatah on it. So that's why it becomes from ambatta to ambatta. The sound is the same for both the words. It's just a writing rule to make it easier. And then ambatta. Then we have anbat. And then tuma, right? We again have the sakin, and then we have tuma, because that's the ending we need to add to this. So again, what happens is. that you've got ta which is jazm and tu which is uh, haraka so instead of writing it like that we make things easier for ourselves and we say am bat tuma does that make sense yes yes alhamdulillah so like we have to take care of this thing when this comes as an identification we should be able to identify inshallah inshallah and whenever you see shadda right uh, because uh, we've done the big eight families so we uh, automatically our mind goes to the shadda families allama and taallama right mm -hmm. but then yeah. even then we see that am but tum or ambat tuma the shadda isn't in the beginning it's at the end or it's not at the place where the uh, where it is shadda to be in those families is that right. in those families so that's another way then then you can see that it is not that family and so here you can open it up open the shadda up and then you can get to the required family inshallah Sure. This rule is for only ending letters, or in in between also. Like in between also, in between oh. also. Let me let me show uh, show you uh, how we go about that. But in advanced serve, uh, there are other rules that come to play, so that may not always be the case. But in these families, in the basic, uh, shadda works the same way in everywhere. so when we were doing the uh, big eight families we came across allama right that is the shadda family mm -hmm. now what we say is that this is the big eight family because it has an extra letter there is also alima <coughs> with the same root letter but this is family 1 because it has one ain one lam and one mim right so there are only three letters in the hua version so that makes it from the f1 family but over here you have ain 
then this is a shadda so we open it up this is the one with the jazm mm -hmm. this is the one with the haraka and then you have meem so basically how many letters do you have four four, four. and that's so why because it has one more than the f1 family it becomes the big eight family okay does this this uh, make change in, in any meaning yes what is the meaning of allama or and alima alima means he knows allama means okay. he teaches allama mm -hmm. yes inshallah when we will reach surf with the ustad again uh, in the dream book mm -hmm. we will go through the meanings of the families how the meanings change as the families change so inshallah we'll do that then i just wanted to show you how the shadda works then again in uh, the allama family if there is instead of uh, after jazam instead of fatha there is a like dama also can come same role yes or... yes with kasra okay. every the every. the the haraka on the shadda shows the haraka of the second letter okay okay mm -hmm. so here ta allama so you've got ta you've got ta ain lam lam mean the first one is jazam and the second one is fatha Mm-hmm. And there are more letters than three, so this is also a big eight family. Is that correct? Oh my God! What is the meaning of this alama? Learn. I learn. Okay. Remember, I remember this especially with the ain lam uh, root. I remember mm -hmm. the hadith of the Prophet, "Khairukum man taallam al Quran wa allamahu." Best of you are those who taallam al Quran. They learn the Quran, wa allamahu, and then they teach it. Mm -hmm. So first is the taallama family, and then the allama family. in that hadith mashallah nice way to remember the allama and allama exactly that's and with this root it's easy because you've got a hadith so then you can <laughs> see if it's something that i am doing to myself uh, it's uh, intransitive or something that like my action is affecting someone else that is transitive right so usually words coming from um taallama family are intransitive and the allama family the effect of the fail goes on to somebody else so anyway uh, this isn't like this is a topic we haven't uh, as such done that much so inshallah this was just a tip that i remember this why otherwise i never seem to remember uh what each family means okay let's see so we've done this the uh, i'm not doing uh, all the words because you, most of the other words they are advanced words and i don't want to go into them uh, as far as uh, for now so inshallah we'll move to the second exercise after it okay attaching pronouns to fails this is something that really uh is something that we need to be very really good about because otherwise then we will get it wrong again and again so uh recall that pronouns attached to fails are nasab because when we did attached pronouns we did that they can either be in jar status or in nasab status and when they attach themselves to verbs they are always in the nasab status because they work as the detail of that uh, fail so to, to translate fails with attached pronouns number 1 identify and ignore the attached pronoun so here you've got this chart over here nasara he helped nasara ha he helped 
her mm. right nasarutu mm -hmm. i helped nasarutu who he helped sorry i helped him so inshallah what we can do is we'll see how to see whether it is an attached pronoun or not we will first mm -hmm. look at a word for example the first word ikhtartuka right and i'll go to the whiteboard again so that ikh tar tuka ikhtar tuka okay now for example we know that the past tense chart you go through and you see the past tense chart and nowhere in that past tense chart you have a ka ending do you Mm -hmm. no okay but uh, no. some people some people might say that ka is a part of the word uh, i mean like for example um how any word with ka in it let's see taraka ah yes jazakallah so how to know that taraka whether the ka is the part of the uh, past tense or an attached pronoun so there was a simple trick pronouns so there was a simple trick that uh, ustad told us and it's a very simple trick and it works every time it is that if you are doubtful whether the ending is uh, a part of the word a part of the past tense or not you just separate it okay so here when you separate ikhtartuka you are left with ikh tar tu plus ka now see whether you have this ending in the past tense chart yes which ending it is ikhtar tu so it will be for ana i okay and this will so be fa'il you... amra no yeah no. <laughs> yeah we're not we're not going into the word right now we're just going okay. into whether the attached uh, we'll go into the word inshallah later on so for okay. now we see that after separating it from the ka the word has an ending that is in the past tense chart so then it is an attached pronoun but with this word with taraka if we separate tara and ka then do you have does this resemble any word in the past tense chart no because you won't have any fail that is two letters everybody gets it yeah yes alhamdulillah so then this is not an attached pronoun it is actually part of the word okay we'll do some other words can somebody tell because i can't see the document uh, can somebody tell the next word in the exercise uh, i don't have it with me so anybody else can say that atai tumu hunna okay this is my favorite word atai uh, uh, number please give the number 10 number 10 okay thank you number 10 
Okay. Again, there are two ways to ascertain whether you've got a uh, past tense. Um, uh, sorry, you've got a word part of the word, or is it an attached pronoun? So first is uh, you go through the whole past tense chart. Do you see a hunna ending? No. You see a na ending and you see a tunna ending, but you don't see a hunna ending, right? Yeah. Yes. So most likely this is a attached, attached pronoun. But mm. then just to confirm, what we do is we do a tai tumu and then we do hunna. Right? Mm. Yes. Okay. If we see this, do we have this ending in the past tense chart? Uh, yes, plural. Mu. Look mm -hmm. closely. <laughs> no. Uh, Look at the plural ending in the chart and the plural ending you are saying it's here. Is there any difference? Here is no alif, so this is not from the past tense. Yes, it is still the past tense, but it's not that ending. It's not the plural word. You see, this wow, this wow has just been added to the word to oh, make. Yes. The That's reading true. easy mm -hmm. and with flow. You see the importance of that one word, one letter, Aleph. So yes, of course, right. Yeah. So what it actually is, it is a teitum. plus u plus hunna. So this is antum version, not the home version. Because mm -hmm. if we did not have the vow in the between, we would have been reading it as a taitum hunna. Yes, which mm -hmm. is not possible. No, not possible. It is possible, but just saying the word, it's you're getting stuck in the middle, right? Yes, and yes. With the recitation of the Quran, why is it so beautiful? Because there's a flow in it. There's divine notes in it. So then anything that stops or becomes a blockade to that is removed. And how is that removed? Either sometimes we add a haraka or sometimes we add a letter. So with other the other than vow, there is there is any yeah. other letters also, which is um, uh, they make for the easy to do. Um, yes, noon also. Noon also is added sometimes. Yeah. Inshallah, okay. when we come to those uh, examples, yeah, we will it's see. Yeah, uh, while adding, uh, we uh, add the vow. Sorry, can you repeat? I didn't get your question. Uh, when do we add the vow? Can you please uh, usually, remind? Usually uh, like this with the Antum version. Antum version, okay. Yes. How can we recognize this one? Only Antum version, right? Yes. Mm. How can we recognize whether it is, wow, I mean, it has added or it is... Uh, because we version. didn't have the Alif here. Mm -hmm. Right? It's the only sign. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the only sign. Okay, that means Ismau also same thing. Ismau, where wow. sorry, which one is it? No, it's not here, but a general word Ismau. So there is a no wow alif, right? Ismau, wow only. It is ending with wow. Ismau. I'll have to Tell see me. it. I don't think so. There should be an alif after it, to my knowledge. 
but i might be wrong uh, can you show me where you uh, uh, have seen the word in usage so then we can see like if we are making a gardan also samia samia like like that isma in oh uh, uh, isma isma it's yeah even then you'll have the alif at the end if in the fe'l amr as well you have the alif in the end with the waw oh okay that's okay. a why that's how it is written for example remember when we are doing isms in the beginning and we did a uh, uh, muslimun musliman muslimin and in the musliman we added an alif in the end yes mm-hmm. right so yeah so these are Isma. writing rules this is how these are and uh, there is a reason behind them as well so here with the uh, home version or uh, yeah with the home version you will always have alif after waw so everybody got this one this uh, this part alhamdulillah alhamdulillah okay now let's move on to the next word okay then we have the same with uh, number 8 wajattumuhum same mm-hmm. with number 6 qataltumuhum these are all antum versions mm mm-hmm. and here the jazam and the meem it will convert into the dhamma yes because when and it's a rule of uh, tajweed that uh, mm-hmm. if you have a wow sakin then uh, it will always have a dhamma or a fatha before it mm-hmm. right but here we have the dhamma uh, for the ease of flow mm-hmm. okay um, number 4 akrah tana who will do akrah tana i will uh, yes akrah 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 tana is the from aslama family akrah no uh, f- first don't do the family just tell me whether the na ending is uh, whether there is a um attached pronoun or part of the word it is akrahata akrahata is like nasarta ak ra anta anta varjana akrahata na is ana nahnu na is nahnu akrahata is nasarta okay so is na an attached pronoun or part of the word is attached pronoun nahnu because when we do we separate them akrahta mm-hmm. plus na then yeah. akrahta we have in the past mm-hmm. tense chart yes so what we'll do is we'll first translate this part akrahta and then we'll translate this part okay mm. because na is also the nahnu ending of the past tense right mm. but we know that because the letter before it is not jazam it has a haraka so it cannot be only one word here right mm-hmm. for example the nasar na the nahnu version you have mm-hmm. na here and then you have a jazam before it 
here you have a haraka before it so that's how you will differentiate whether the na is a part of the word or it's an attached pronoun mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and this is very important because this is the easiest way for you to see whether the na is an attached pronoun or not and then you can uh, uh, then you can translate it accordingly otherwise if you see this as just one word then you'll see you'll just translate it without translating the detail here mm -hmm. na is detail this is detail mm -hmm. here it is just part of the word this is still the fail mm -hmm. so it's a very big difference which we need we really need to see yeah it's clear right can you please go through this again rub this off and go through this again sure no there should be jazam mm -hmm. for example if i had the word mm, let's see is ta farna now is this an attached pronoun na here or is it a part of the word part of the word why because there is a jazam before the na and it is for the past tense term yes so how can it be a part of the word i mean yeah i didn't get the ending there is a jazam on ra yes and this ah yes this yes i got it yes so we cannot separate the na from here istaghfarana is there a difference so now, between both yes so na yes. Uh, in the second word the na can be separated from here the na yes. can be separated because yes because if you if even if you separate this this will be left do you have any past tense ending like this no no and it cannot be a amar it cannot be a commanding because that has a kasra here istaghfir yes mm. yes right? alhamdulillah okay yes yeah i got much better now okay so when we were doing the nasara uh, the past tense conjugation that's why i uh, expressly told you to keep in mind the jazm that happens in the uh, in the conjugation because that will tell you uh, whether or not sorry whether or not it is a part of the word or it is a attached pronoun so over here you see nasarna nasarta nasarutuma nasarutum nasarti nasarutuma nasartunna nasarutu nasarna so it all has jazm right yes true we got your point alhamdulillah alhamdulillah okay now and now sisters i will leave okay sure and i'll we just have more like i think 10 15 more minutes then i have to go for prayers as well so inshallah we'll uh, continue this tomorrow then after it inshallah i'll see the recording for the last 15 minutes sure sure inshallah, inshallah. just make it 15 don't make it 20 <laughs> <laughs> sure inshallah inshallah assalam alaikum assalam alaikum subhanakallahu alaikum assalam Okay, so the attached pronouns. First, you have to identify that whether the word is the the ending is an attached pronoun or it's part of the past tense. Then translate. If it's an attached pronoun, you have you are now certain that it's an attached pronoun. Then separate both of them. first translate the fail part 
and then translate the attached pronoun. So in that way, your translation would be correct, inshallah. Okay. So on this page, anything else anybody wants to ask? No, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Translate based on the English clues. Okay, we won't go into translation because that is not our focus right now. We'll just mm -hmm. do the inside doers of these words quickly. A um, couple of them, inshallah, so that we can then go ahead. Um, okay. Makkanna. What is the inside doer? Which was it, sir? Your voice was breaking. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, number four. Page 36, number four. V uh, nahnu. Good. Nahnu. Okay. Uh, then number eight. Was wasa. Kova. Nice. Okay. Um, Faalu. What is a vasvasa? Vasvasa. Hua version. Hua version, okay. Because it's ending with a fatha, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you've got kazabu. Hum. Number 17. Hum. Hum. Yes. Number 10, Zaqa. Uma. Uma. Yes. Excellent. Agwaita. Number 6. Fua. Ta ending. Anta? Uh, ta has a jazam before it. So it's a past tense ending. Anta. Yes. This is clear? Agwaita? Anta? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Then we'll move to fill in the blanks with appropriate pronouns. Okay. Khalaqakum. Uh, Yes, Fazia. Khalaqakum. Is it a attached pronoun or a part of the ending? It is attached pronoun. Okay. And inside door is uh, Hua. No. Okay, good. Khalaqa, and hua. what is the kum here? Uh, it, is, uh, it is antum. Yes, it is a detail because it is yeah, attached it is. pronoun. It is in the jar status. Sorry, in a sub mm -hmm. status. And it is antum version. Exactly. So, Khalaqa, uh, he created whom you all. Uh, 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 Sister Asfia. Uh, can you do in, on the previous page yes. uh, one or two for um, uh, Hunna uh, version? Because when we were doing the exercise, uh, uh, there was a little bit, uh, that was a little dif uh, difficult to detect. Okay. Hunna version. Uh, Hunna like before the, uh, like uh, inside doer Hunna version, when uh, an attached pronoun comes, the way it was written was a little bit, I know now, but it was a little hard. Okay, uh, where do we have such a word? Oh, okay, I have to look. Uh, uh, it is... Uh, Maybe I 
it was before okay when we uh, get across it i can't oh, see no it problem. yeah okay inshallah yeah. inshallah when we come across it we'll, we'll do okay it. okay um then you've got um number 12 fa akhadat kum Opposite is a uh, hiya version. Hmm. Kum. Kum is antum. Yes. Great. Then we have Alam Tana. Number six. Number. Yes, Sarah. Yes. Number sixteen. Alam Tana. Anta. Anta, and then uh, attached is uh, Nano. Us. Yes. Excellent. Anta and Nano. Okay. Um. Okay. Over here. Let's see. Number twenty-four. Akhla da hu. Akhla da is a hua. Hmm. Who? Who is also hua? Yes, both are hua. The inside door as well as the detail. At uh, twenty, uh, please do twenty-three. Atanakum, okay. Yes. Atanakum. So then, uh, when you're not sure about it, then what you do is you first of all um, separate the word. So we leave off the kum. Then we have atana. So then, do you have any ending in the past tense start with the na ending? Hunna, hunna, yes. The na has a jazm on the letter before it, so it is the hunna version. So they all uh, is the inside doer. The the they all women, those all women, and kum is the detail. You all. Mm. Is it clear for uh, Sister Fazia? Do you understand oh, uh, it? Yeah, no, uh, it is clear to me. I just wanted others to uh, because uh, I have done it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. 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 Yeah. So uh, because this uh, na, if it has a jazm before it, then it will be the hunna version. These are the two conditions for that. Na with a jazm before. Okay. What about twenty one? fa andar tukum so fa is not part of the word right it is a, it is a harf which is a beginning harf so andar mm tukum -hmm. so you've got to remove the kum first to see whether mm -hmm. kum is an attached pronoun or not and mm -hmm. when we separate it we are left with andar tu so is a tu ending uh, in the past tense chart Nasal to Anna. Yes. Anna will be there. Yeah, for Anna, we say Nasal to. And Darutu, Nasal to Anna version. So Anna is the inside doer. Kum is the detail. So the root words will be Nadara. Yes. And the family is family four and Dara. Aslama, Anzara. Is it Aslam family? Yes. Like Anna Aslam too, like that. Yeah. Uh, I have a question for Aslam family. Uh, besides the passive, uh, past tense passive, is there any other uh, word that you would uh, you might confuse with the uh, small six family? 
Mm. Yes, uh, like for example, uh, you have Aslama and then you have Yuslimu. Mm -hmm. mm. Because I know that I sometimes get confused. I don't, I don't have examples. But uh, no, I think it will be in the present tense that the confusion arises, uh, not in uh, the past can, tense. Uh, can, can you write down a, a word in the present tense uh, that we don't know? We know you, Slimma. Okay. Um, some word that uh, we uh, want to figure it out that if it is small six or uh, sure. a slimma. Sure. This was a word in the recognition book that first gave me a lot of headache and then I reached to the conclusion that I had forgotten what I'd done before and uh, so it made me really look in deep. Yes. But, but this is passive. Yeah, we, we can do that but after that I mean active also besides this, yeah. Oh, active. Okay, let's see. Oh, go first. ahead. With, uh, do this. Go, go ahead. Do this, and then active. Okay. Use jadu. So, when we do the recognition work, we have steps. So the first one, the first step is usually whether to see whether it's a past tense or a present tense. So can you tell me what it is, past or present? It's uh, past passive. Present. Okay, why present? present? The present. Present passive. Because it start with the you, aunt. The second ha last letter has a, a over it, yes. So it is, uh, and it is a you beginning, u ending. That's why it is present. Right? First we see yeah. present or past. So yus jadu does not mean any ending in the past tense. So we know that you beginning u ending is present tense because in present tense we consider both the beginning and the ending. So yus jadu. Then what we what I did, what I usually do in all of the other families is that I remove the present tense markers, right? So I remove these. And we are left with how many letters? Three, three letters. So I used to do three letters. Okay, it is from the F1, the family one families, the small uh, six families. So use Jadu is the passive present of Sajada Yes Judu family. This is Nasara family. Nasara, because we have Nasara Yansuru, so we call this the Nasara family. And this is completely correct, right? Yeah. If your answer is this, after recognition, it is completely correct. But the problem is that out of all the families, family four is an exceptional family. It always, always makes us confused because if we go through the Aslama family, sorry, this is yes, ju, yes, yus jadu, right? This was yus jadu. Yeah. So the word was yus. Jadu. Now, if we say as jada, aslama, as jada, and we have 
yus jidu which is the jidu active present tense present. right yes so if we make this passive what will we do use jidu us jidu yeah us jidu that will be the that will be the past tense we just we are just talking about the present right now कमांड Commanding verbs are always made from the active present tense fail. Mm -hmm. Full did like from, like from as jada yus jidu. Then we'll have did mm. tos jidu. Mm. Mm. then we'll yeah. have tus jid then we'll drop the ta but mm. as this is mm. aslama family we won't have mm. the helper alif alif we'll have the hamza of the aslama mm. family come in so mm. it will be as jid mm -hmm. So, as a stress here, you said uh, family one and family four have same passive, right? Use you do same um, passive present, yes. So, how do we know which family is it? Then? There are many words in the Quran which have more than one forms, which are similar. Inshallah, there is a very very famous uh, ayah in Surah Baqarah where. uh the breast feeding and the rada is mentioned right and in that mm -hmm. ayah the word tudar yeah. has two forms mm -hmm. so then both meanings will be applicable and that opens a very very big scope of meaning and understanding and uh, uh, more uh, scope for commands from allah So it's one of the linguistic miracles that certain words work in more than more ways than one. So uh, similarly, use jadu if there is any instance in the Quran of active sorry of passive present tense from um, either family four or family one, then they will have both meanings and they will be considered by the ulama for tafsir. Yes, yes. I remember we did that with Sadr Hussain. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. So, so uh, at that time, I had no idea what she was talking. About. Yeah, and there's another one. I, I think I Diane also has the same thing. The word is used in both forms. Hmm. So there are many, many words in the Quran that uh, we will, inshallah, inshallah, come upon, and uh, we'll see that. a one word can be used in more than one ways inshallah uh, uh, sister can you also do the present tense uh, of the aslama family and uh, uh, to see that like if it is confusing with um, three a small three families a small six families yus jidu is the present tense active present tense uh, of aslama family is yus limu right So yeah, yeah. Uh, besides you, Slimu, uh, choose the one something that we are not familiar with. Okay. Let's do the family one. Family one yeah. and family Aslama. So how to see that if there is confusion or not? Okay. Let's see. If we have, for example, let's take Bab Fataha. You have uh, Fataha. We'll do is just do Fataha for now because it's two o'clock. Uh, okay. I'll need to be going, okay. so we'll just okay. do this. Then we'll do the rest tomorrow. I'll okay. go through all the families, inshallah. 
So fataha yaf tahu aslama yuslimu. Yes. Then you got nas daraba. Yad ribu. Then you got and the passive is yuf tahu. Right, and this is yus lamu. Then daraba yad ribu yud rabu. Usable. Then you've got uh, Nasara Yansuru Yunsaru Then you've got Samia Yes Mau Yus, yes, ma'u. Then you've got Hasiba Yahsibu Yusabu. Yusabu. Then you've got uh, Karuma family does not have passive, so we won't consider it. But we can just write Karuma. Yakrumo. So in this chart, you will see that the passive present of family four and all the small six, all the five families, small families from family one are similar. But the active parts, the active present will not be similar to family four because family four active present starts with you. And all of the families in the family one families have fatha in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the only confusion or the only uh, mixing of these families in, in is in the present passive tense fail. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I was very yeah. Why yeah. So inshallah we'll uh, continue tomorrow. So just uh, uh, mark where till we did so that we don't waste any time uh, on uh, where to start. So which page were we on? We were on page 37. So we'll do just a few of these and then inshallah, um, present tense will start from tomorrow inshallah. inshallah. Uh, we, we were on page 38, so uh, yes, yes. we, we finished, we pretty, pretty much uh, finished mm -hmm. the past tense. Yes. So you just go through these words, any questions that you have, put in the group, right? So inshallah, whatever discussion that happens is in the group and everybody can uh, benefit from it. And then inshallah tomorrow, uh, hopefully we'll start with the present tense, inshallah. Uh, but, so Asfia, sorry. do you have do you have any document uh, about the present tense, past tense, and how to distinguish between all three? Um, yes, I. Um, if you can put it sorry, in. Sorry, distinguish uh, between all three in how? No, how? no not all. Like uh, when we are distinguishing uh, among uh, for the families, like oh, uh, okay, okay. present, yes, past, yes. and commanding, and everything. If you have a document, please put it in the uh, group.
Okay, sure. I did put it in the group, but I'll put them all together. The isms, yeah. past tense, and present tense. How to recognize them? Because with the commanding and the forbidding, it's very easy. In the yeah. sense that uh, with the commanding, you'll always have the jazam at the end, or it mm -hmm. will be a light version, right? Uh, otherwise, it will all uh, lightest version. Sorry, commanding. and forbidding are lightest version present tenses and uh, with the forbidding you will always have the la right so in recognizing those two is not that difficult the problem that arises is with the word being either an ism or a fail and if it's a fail then is it past tense or present tense so inshallah i'll do all the three notes together in the group and then you can go through them and we can inshallah after we do the present tense uh, we will do all four pages of the recognition workbook that ustad did in the intensive i think four was it uh, he introduced the workbook over there so inshallah we will do them there all of them inshallah ജസാക്കല്ലാ <laughs> <laughs>